Uh, let's um, bring on John Moore and Ann Morrison. John usually uh, hops on for a segment, gives us all the high points. He has his own radio show uh, right now at Republic Radio. Uh, we're hoping to uh, see some some uh, major, uh, uh, I'm going to say it, uh, news coming down the pike here. I won't say what it is. But, uh, John, you've got always got top stories, top sources, and I rely on uh, your journalistic investigations. You're a forensic investigator for criminal investigations. You're a former special forces, and you're a prepper consultant. So if people want to know how to prep, including the average person or the expert prepper or the millionaire, you're the guy to contact. Uh, and we've put together a list over the number of years now called the 10 plus list, which is pretty, it's getting more complete all the time. We had more information and, uh, what's the latest news, John? Well, I've been, thank you, Dr. Bill, for having me. I've been hearing for, for several months from my private sources that the, uh, events at Benghazi, Libya were set up, uh, uh, as part of a plan to have, uh, Ambassador Stevens and the two other men with him, uh, be kidnapped, and then that, that kidnapping would uh, result in an exchange for the the blind sheikh that we're holding prisoner, and this would be had take place just before the election in November, making uh, uh, Hussein Obama look like a hero. Everything being contrived, of course, by Hussein Obama's uh, people in this effort to make him look like a hero just before the election. Of course, the Navy SEALs uh, did not get the word uh, that intervened and. Ended up paying for that with their lives. The uh, men who were in sta- engaged in kidnapping were very upset that the uh, that they met with stiff armed resistance when they were they were told there would be a light if any resistance at all, uh, which of course resulted in uh, Ambassador Stevens uh, succumbing to smoke inhalation and eventually dying in the hospital. Uh, very disturbing that this uh, this is far worse than what brought down President Nixon, of course, the right. Watergate burglary at the uh, national uh, the Democratic National uh, Headquarters in the Watergate Hotel 40 years ago. Far, far worse than a than a no big deal second rate burglary but to install wiretapping and equipment. Um, and this should bring an end to this presidency. I, I, I emphasize should bring an end to the presidency. The second story, uh, which hasn't received nearly the attention and it should, it deals with seven people, five men and two women, apprehended, arrested uh, Tuesday morning after midnight, uh, this past Tuesday, the 14th, after midnight, apprehended uh, and arrested for trespassing at the one of the uh, major man-made uh, uh, reservoirs, water reservoirs that, that provides drinking water for uh, metropolitan Boston, Massachusetts. The five men uh, come from Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, and Singapore all claim to be chemical engineers. We don't know much about the two women. Uh, What we do know is they were arrested, uh, questioned, uh, and released, uh, pending uh, coming back before a judge with misdemeanor trespassing charges. Authorities are saying that these uh, five individuals have, quote-unquote, no connection to any other criminal activity. Uh, I'm not sure what they're basing it on. I I would uh, not make that determination myself until I had federal court, federal issued uh, warrant, uh, search warrants, and uh, searched and seized everything in their homes, their automobiles, and interviewed everybody these people know, uh, right. and so forth. Um, how they can come to that conclusion with a cursory uh, interrogation um, at some police station, I simply don't have a clue. Well, but maybe the people doing it were either brain dead or they're on the take. Uh, I would assume I'm called this now the Muslim equation, which is Muslim plus chemical engineer in wrong place equals terrorism. How's that? Uh, it sounds good. It sounds good. You know, compared to this, um, the, a lot of silliness makes major news, such as who's going to be the next winner of the uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the talent show that's on television. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, the thing and is, we, we know there's going to be a wave of online security, there. making sure that that elderly grandmothers are uh, are searched in their groin area, uh, going to go through airport security. This is real. Ter- this is uh, real uh, threats uh, by people who need to be thoroughly investigated, along with everybody they've they've talked to in the last five years. And as far as the public uh, attention being given to it, there's, there's no there's nothing that indicates that's being done. Nothing at all. Right, and of course the next thing is the IRS scandal. We even have uh, these politicians. The IRS knew about this inquiry in 2012. We've got these politicians as well, Franken, 
uh, and uh, uh, this other Wrangle. character, and Wrangle. Charles Wrangle. Uh, Charles Wrangle's uh, actually enraged yeah, over Wrangle, it. Uh, yeah, Wrangle's, uh, Wrangle's a liberal's liberal and is known to support every liberal cause that comes along. But I have to give credit where credit is due. Uh, yeah, he, he, uh, Congressman Charles Wrangle is doing the right thing. And oh, he's, he's enraged. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, Charles Schumer and Franken were urged the IRS to target the Tea Party in 2012. This kind of this should send these guys to jail. They shouldn't just get their houses and cars, and, 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 you know, impounded. They should go to prison. This kind of activity needs to take down congressmen and senators, uh, politicians, bureaucrats, and anybody else a functionary that thinks this is the way to run things in America. This is not a third world a banana republic. This is America. Right. And the, the intent of that kind of activity, Dr. Bill, is to have a chilling effect on people who might get involved politically who will choose not to because of their fear of this kind of activity. Uh, and and that's they're getting that desired effect. People will be fearful of engaging in legitimate political action because of the actions of the federal government against people who do such things. It's a very dangerous and very chilling effect. The same thing was done in the Soviet Union for decades to the point where uh, reasonable people, uh, with very few exceptions, would not get involved in anything uh, that would countermand uh, the mainstream politics in the Soviet Union. And I don't think that uh, Obama, and now we're a crisis per week, now I call it the sub-crisis per hour, because this thing with Benghazi is not just one crisis, it's an expanding, multi-faceted mess. It's unbelievable, isn't it? It is. It is. It is, yeah. and uh, and there's there, we now have public ofi- officials saying publicly that uh, the war on terrorism will be indefinite, will go on forever, and that, well, that is their intent. Uh, well, we got to stop that because they're going to be killing thousands or millions of Americans with airborne plagues. Then we need to find out that the Ingram, the one that was actually involved with this thing in the IRS, is now going to be quote the main person running the Obamacare IRS connection. That's obscene. Well, it is, and and uh, to be. Re- with a promotion and a new position and um, adding to her pension fund even more on top of what she's already done. It, it's it's uh, reprehensible. Yeah, it needs to stop. Um, uh, I've been putting it to the uh, Tea Party and the Conservatives and the Republicans to throw off the bounds of the Rhino Republicans, do their job, or we're going to see the emergence of a third party coming up the next election and the Democrats are dead. Yeah, a viable third party. Yeah, take care. Now joined with uh, Ann Morrison. Of course, uh, John's website is thelibertyman.com. Ann's is homeland-defense-4u.com. And you've got a ton of information that you sent me to today. Uh, let's start yeah, at the top. Uh, let's start off with the, um, the uh, Sharon Harris uh, nuclear plant shut down because of cracking in the containment vessel. Then we'll talk about the meteor exploding and lots of other stuff. Popo uh, in Mexico. The, well, okay. Uh, volcano in Mexico City about to literally blow, and it did blow apparently at midnight. Yeah, let's talk about Sharon Harris nuclear plant. That's in the Piedmont of North Carolina, and it's a Westinghouse installation. Now, it um, a year ago, okay, let's talk a year ago, a full year ago, in the spring of 2012, they had um, taken ultrasonic data during a shutdown, during a maintenance shutdown. And they, I guess they uh, took a year to discover a corrosion inside the containment vessel. Now, the containment vessel is the part that holds the nuclear reaction. And it's a, there's corrosion on, on one of the bolts of the vessel head. So the vessel head is the top of the reaction chamber. So... Um, and it says in 212 they saw a grape, well, yeah, this is, re- this is a, a reminder of the De- Davis-Bessey nuclear power station in Ohio, which had a grapefruit, grapefruit-sized cavity in the reactor vessel. So um, they think they caught it early enough, and there was no indication that radioactive water leaked out of the vessel. Um, um, well, I don't know about that. Maybe they, if you don't look for it, you aren't going to find it, right? And right. Uh, the the vessel head repairs will take place in a highly radioactive area, so they'll use remotely operated robotics. 
and they're going to scrape out the corroded material and uh, welding in the area and like a dental cavity and will be performed by a technical special, uh, specialist. Now, this plant was issued in October of 1986. And so... And then in December of 2008, so we're only talking 96, 2006, 2008. So we're talking um, 10, we're talking 20, 22 years. They renewed the license for 40 years. <laughs> and this was, and, and the, now they're, they're having to go in and maintain it. Um, and so I suspect the maintenance during the second half of its life is going to be a lot. And, you know, every time it's maintained, it's out of commission. It's not producing power. And so the, the marginal call, the margin cost of this reactor is going to increase substantially. But uh, um, so that those people that live in the, in the Piedmont areas of the East Coast uh, that radiation could go any place. Right now, there's a right now there's a low that's going over the. Um, oh, I wanted to look at it. Uh, yeah, she's looking low, at the data right now. Yeah. Yeah, there's a low. Well, actually, it's all highs. So the radiation, if it were to blow, the the radiation would probably go south into Florida. Hmm. So that's the bad news there. All right, on to the next subject, Dr. Bill. Yeah, and there's a comet that's going to, an asteroid that's going to pass us. It's 1.7 miles across on May 31st, and you have a possible uh, CME impact uh, also May 17th coming up. It's literally today. Uh, and this one is geocentric. It's basically aimed at us. So we've got a lot of space weather issues going on. This is the year of the comet. There's also uh, the ice on is going to be really big. According to Professor McCanny, we tried to get him on today. I don't know if we're lucky to get him on at the bottom of the hour. We're going to try to get Professor McCanny, so we'll see if our board op, Don, can do that. Um, the uh, issue, he thinks it's a 2,600-kilometer-across uh, comet, and it's going to be a sun grazer. It'll pass 700,000 kilometers. This 1.7-mile uh, uh, kilometer one, is actually so big, and they think it was a sun grazer, that it got melted by passing near the sun. That's why it has this dark, gunky material on this uh, asteroid. Um, it's big, and it's going to pass pretty close to the Earth. Well, give us the latest on that and on the CME that's going to hit us today and the other grazer one that was already fired off two days ago that's going to hit us as well. Well, initially they didn't think the CME was going to hit us. They thought it was going to hit a couple of the spacecraft missions that NASA has going on because it was um, shot off from uh, Sunspot AR 1748 when it was on the backside of the sun. And so they said, yeah, it shot off some CME, and uh, but we don't think you know, the Earth directed. Well, then they came out yesterday and they said, well, there, we might have some CME uh, effects today. And so we're waiting for those effects. I guess it hasn't hit yet. Um, that sunspot has been very active, and in about, well, I would say by Tuesday, it'll be in the center of the solar disk. And when it's in the center of the solar disk, that means that any flares or CME that it produces will be Earth-directed. So the, Yeah. Yeah. Now, the sun is above the equator, so not only will it be Earth-directed, it'll be northern hemisphere-directed. And will probably uh, give us northern aurora borealis. And we already have aurora borealis down as far as the top part of Missouri, although they're very faint at that point. You know, they're brighter yeah. up in Canada. So um, we already have an active atmosphere. We have an active ionosphere, and that's from the flares that, um, that's, that the sunspot has given off. It's given off four flares, X-rated flares, in the last three days. And they, don't, they seem to think it's going to continue to, to um, produce flares and CMEs. Yeah, now, in fact, according to, to Professor McCann, he expects the ISON to really speed up the post-ISON passage uh, of the sun to cause flares for maybe several years, major superstorms on the sun. So it won't just be one event passage. It'll be a whole series of superstorms that will continue for many months after the ISON passage. 
Okay, that'll be in December, November, December time. Yeah, frame. October it'll actually be passing near the moon, uh, uh, sorry, Mars. And it, he says it'll take over 30 days for the tail to pass through Mars, so they're going to get a lot of toxins, a lot of impact uh, uh, part of the tail, which will include debris field. And then it's going to be a sun grazer, which means it'll trigger off major plasma exchanges between this highly charged object uh, passing near the sun, which means we're going to have solar superstorms in any of these sunspots as it rotates in about a 20, was it 29-day cycle, I think it is? 27. 27, yeah. It sun rotates around almost like a lunar cycle, which is 28 days. It, the sun rotates around, so it's like a guy standing on a, a platform that rotates with a shotgun. And uh, if he rotates in our direction, it's Earth-centric, which is why this one today that went off is actually going to hit us in a couple of days' time. will hit us directly, but it's not as big as the one that was fired off on uh, the 15th, two days ago. Right. Well, it's yeah, it's rotated onto the solar disk, uh, but it's still far east. Now, in addition, we've probably forgotten about Comet Lemon, but you right. don't want to forget about it because it's still close to the solar system. And, in fact, there was a disconnection event. Now, what's a disconnection event, you're probably asking. Uh. Comet, Comet Lemon disconnected from its tail. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. And I think it was due to the CME effect. Wow. Amazing. Stay tuned. Ann Morris and our scientists back in a moment. Discussions, if you have questions on any of these topics, call in 800-259-5791, 800-259-5791. All hours are open except the first hour on Friday where we answer your questions. Welcome back. And we have Glenn in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. You had a question, comment, or statement to make. Go ahead. And I think uh, you mentioned uh, some of this on uh, John Morris' show because he's on 7 to 9 a.m. Central Time with his co-host, Dan Morrison. Um, go ahead, uh, Glenn, in Philly. You're on the air. Thank you, Dr. Deagle. Yeah, I, I think this is a, a worthy of mention, uh, at least anthropologically, sociologically, and spiritually. We're about to come to the end of a 10-year uh, period, the end of an Internet phenomenon uh, in the window between May 20th and June 1st when Cliff High's uh, HalfPastHuman.com WebBot project comes to an end during the period uh, during which he's predicting the beginnings of a global coastal event, which he's saying is actually a process that could take up take several years, <laughs> where you know that will involve earthquakes and the cracking of tectonic plates and all that, sort of, and, and the deaths of up to 1.289 billion people per his number, and. Uh, he had been involved, involved or remote viewers in this, but his process is one of sampling the Internet through these programs called spiders mm-hmm. that crawl the web and uh, call up a bunch of linguistic and statistical data, which yeah. he interprets various ways. So uh, this is it's either global coastal event or bust between May well, 20th okay. and June 1st. Uh, I'm going to summarize. Uh, the Web Bio Project characterized me as definitely on the inside, CIA or some form of government op. So big mistake right there, number one. Number two, I consider uh, using this technology as a form of electronic Ouija board. Uh, and who are you contacting when you use a Ouija board? You're contacting transdimensional spirits, otherwise known as demons or agents of the dark side, that literally have no good intentions for mankind or the future of our race. So that's your first thing. Uh, secondly, uh, when you do that, you assume that, quote, the global consciousness that you can tap by uh, tapping the phenomes, uh, the, uh, the the memes, if you want to call it, the ideas that are perpetrated through the Internet as a way to get the global consciousness as if there's no difference between the, quote, consciousness of mankind and, quote, the universe. When, in fact, God is separate and above and beyond the universe, God resides in a place called the eternal now, which basically is not in any dimension, certainly not bound by our time space, and that's why, to God, he has absolute omniscience. He knows where every photon of the universe will be a trillion years from now. So there's no such thing as lack of omniscience of the Most High God. And when he gives partial messages to his servants, the prophets, either in dreams or visions, he doesn't give them wavering. That's why he continues the Bible compared to all the ancient prophets that were there, like Elisha when he called down fire from heaven to burn not only up the sacrifice, but in all the stones and all the false prophet priests were literally burnt to ashes. So I call out and say, as a son of the Most High God, as a one with a prophetic and an apostolic anointing, and I know I can recognize those who do have that kind of apostolic anointing, uh, I don't do this for myself. I don't have an ego issue, although people say, because he's so smart and he's so fast-talking and technical, he's, gay, he's a narcissist. No, that's not true at all. I do this for one reason. I love my Creator God. 
and I love my fellow man, and I will do God's will to the moment of my death. And I can tell you right now, the false prophets are a plenty right now, and people need to understand that you need to stick to the biblical narrative, which tells you you need to pray. And I tell people, I'm not your mod- mediator, I'm your facilitator to contact Creator God. Use your intellect, because God gave you one. Research things thoroughly, and after you've done that, then go off and quietly pray. And if those two witnesses confirm that what we're saying is true, then ask God what you need to do next. Now don't ask us, ask God. You've done your research, you've listened, you've checked reports, you've listened to everybody, including you know, geopolitical, non-spiritual, uh, we call political agnostics like Gerald Salente, you've listened to people like Joel Skousen in his, in his wit and analysis, you listen to our show, and we cut through all the crap. Uh, and the fact is, I believe what we're presenting goes much farther than any other broadcaster in this or any other network because we're going to connect to the spiritual roots of the problem. We're going to connect to the above government technology. We're going to connect to things such as um, interaction with what I call transdimensionals, which is a better term to use in the modern era than the ancient terms of you know demons and angels. That deals with the level that we have a highly populated universe of very good and evil, and people are like little children in Hansel and Gretel in the woods. They have no understanding. The public churches want to teach primarily what I call milk and cookies gospel, not special forces gospel. And when you start to believe in Jesus and actually do what God says, believe me, the devil and his minions are going to be after your carcass. And that includes all of his minions out there that don't want to hear the truth or even raise good questions. So, uh, great question, Glenn. Any comments you want to make? Well, yes, uh, first, Kofi uh, refers to the universe, you know, in the first person as having, you know, I'm, I'm characterized as, as having a will and a volition for even right down to the individual with the way one would refer to a monotheistic God. He's uh, very glib about the whole thing. He's, uh, he thinks everybody should just relax and meditate and not get excited about it. Um, he disclaims, you know, he, being a prophet, he hopes that he's wrong. And uh, he can just go off and sail in his boat, and he's very fortunate that he's not subject to the Old Testament standard of prophet, false prophets being stoned, as all the modern Well, first years. off, uh, even a prophet's knowledge was limited, and most of them didn't even understand fully what they were prophesying. I'd say close up and seal the words of the book of Daniel until the time of the end. Um, what we need to know, and I'm going to just give you the template again, which I presented in 1999 at the Prophecy Club, which I received in 1988, Firstly, uh, we're in the time of troubles. We have Obama, which is promising to split the city of Jerusalem, which even Jack Van Impey and all the major ministries are going enraged about. I mean, when I saw Jack, I saw a prophet priest on fire last weekend. The man was blazing the fire of judgment from his eyes. And Rex Van Impey, who's also a doctor, they were, like, enraged by this president. And you need to be enraged. Uh, we, we have a situation where, where we have Obama uh, literally uh, arming al-Qaeda, al-Nursa al-Qaeda, our more sworn enemy, making them, using them, for example, as a scheme, which you talked about with John Moore, to exchange for the blind shake. Uh, the ambassador dies because he probably wasn't going along with the program, so we're going to swat him down hard with the transshipment of arms to, to do a regime change of the Syrians. If Obama keeps on pushing, we're going to be, uh, as Lyndon LaRouche says, we're going to be in World War III. Now, there will be a time of peace that says, you know, hold back the winds, it says in the Bible, uh, for half an hour, space of half an hour, or a period of time, uh, and do not let the, earth, the wind blow on the earth until the sealing of the sons uh, and daughters of the Most High God on their heart and on their forehead. What God is saying, basically, he's going to hold things back when it looks like the end is so close. He's going to hold it back for a period of time until there's a final grasp of, of grace, a final action, such as signing the covenant with death, a final evil action of someone like Obama, who is the only person alive that literally can set up the rebuilding of the Temple of Herod, uh, which was given by the uh, Sanhedrin in January 2007 to George Bush and passed on to the Abominator. And doesn't he have a perfect name, the Abomination That Shall Desolate? The Abomination. And I like how John refers to him as Hussein Obama, because that's who he is. Hussein, who's the name of the son of Muhammad the Prophet. This is not a religion, it's an anti-religion. People need to face the music that the religion of the Antichrist is Islam. It's Islam, which is the most vile form of Satanism, which is why there's more satanic high-level Masons that are Muslim than all other religious groups, including Christian, Southern Baptist, uh, Baha'i, whatever other group you want to talk about. There are more high-level satanic Masons that are Muslim than all other groups put together. Well, um, the... um well, you know, while I may not agree, I, I understand what you're saying, um, and I may not agree with everything Jack Manifee says doctrinally, but... Um, but no, but you can understand it. You don't have to believe God. this. He, 
he loves he God, and you don't believe eschatology about the rapture, but he is justifiably and biblically, and there's lots of other ministers that share with him, justifiably yeah. biblically enraged over the fact that we have a yeah. United States government, I call it Ephraim America, who is now trying to abandon Israel, which will guarantee a thermonuclear war in the Middle East, a collapse of the world economy, millions of Muslims and Arabs and other people, innocent people, will die. Uh, the state of Israel will be will be turned into a disaster zone. Most of the people in, in, Judea, in Israel, Judea, Samaria, which are not Israeli, but they're Judas, Judah, uh, will die, and uh, half of Jewry on earth will disappear immediately. Well, they, well, Jack Van Impey simply loves God and loves uh, Jesus. He loves humanity. He's instant and out of season. He's not ashamed of the gospel. And you just you right. Know, you don't uh, have to be perfect. I, I'm not perfect. I don't have perfect knowledge. I just do the best with what I have. And God's given me some revelations in some areas. But I can tell you where we're going is it's very likely that if Obama is not removed from power uh, with these number of what we call disaster per weeks, if he's not removed from power. You can pretty well take to the bank that he's going to he's going to partition the state of Israel and the city of Jerusalem. He's going to confirm the covenant with the of death with the state of Israel and the Muslims. He's going to help confirm with the two popes, the Nazi pope and the Jesuit black pope, the uh, literally a dialogue or dialectic of peace, so-called peace with Islam, uh, and uh, a East-West treaty that will bring forth a new financial system for the Russians and Chinese and the Muslims. Uh, it's not good. It doesn't look good at all. Okay. Excellent. Uh, great questions um, and your comments. Uh, we have lots of other space weather to talk about. Uh, I mentioned uh, a very important point. There's no such thing as an extinction level event. You can have sub-extinction level events. You can have the disasters you line up in the book of Revelation which will cause a great disaster and a massive population reduction, but we're not going to end up with the uh, end of the world. There's no such thing as the end of the world. It may go through a lot of catastrophes. There will always be a remnant because the Creator God will always maintain a remnant of his, uh, of his uh, saved ones, and he will, a thousand years from now, a million years from now, he will have a, a version of mankind on the planet worshiping the Creator God of the universe. And people need to understand that our God is God, and he'll preserve us if we are obedient, and if we're, if we're repentant, and if we're willing to follow his will, which is the only way to do good. And no matter what technology we think we have, whether space travel, anti-aging technology, uh, zero-point energy, nothing will save us without the will of the Creator God or his will. Uh, nothing. Yes. Um, well, of course, um, you have to take into account miracles. Oh, and miracles so, uh, are God's will. You see, he can supersede his own laws, but the even more miraculous than sometimes miracles is the total omniscience of God who knows that a certain solar event might happen or a certain geopolitical or geological event will happen. Even the name of individuals that are even burned into the Bible and the Bible code, the, the Creator God can do that through multidimensional, in, infinite and omniscient intelligence so that even a, every photon of energy before the founding of the new foundation of the universe is in his infinitely knowledgeable mind. That just shows you the omniscience of God in, in some ways is even more awesome than his miraculous superseding of his own laws. Okay. Well, I Does that make sense? You, yeah. Yeah, I want to tell you about a causal event rather than... Yes, let's, than, let's do that. <laughs> Okay, this is an event that's happening right now out in the uh, at the end of the Aleutian Island chain. So it's almost yes. to Kamchatka, and it's uh -huh. a buoy that has had a that has had a an event happen to it. And uh, it looks like, as near as I can tell from reading this, that it went. It started out at forty seven ten, so it went down ten, twenty, thirty feet, and then went back up again. So there's something that happened over there. Uh, maybe an earthquake. I mean, 30 feet is a long drop for a buoy. Yeah, it is a long, very long drop, yeah. Yeah. And people can go up to the National Database Buoy Center, ndbc.noaa.gov, mm. and look these up. And they you know, they give you a map, and they even show you which ones are, are, um, are active at the moment, you know, where something anomalous is going on. I just happened to well, pick up on that. Well, that, that's a good intro to what I was going to say, too, and I want you to carry this up further because these events are up near Kamchatka, which is not too far from uh, 
from Vladivostok and also from the Kuril Islands north of Japan and also the uh, volcanic island chain or fault, fault lines that run from Mount Fuji all the way through Oi, all the way down through Fukushima. And uh, the problem is that uh, we, when I got up this morning, our radiation had gone up after the earthquake about two months ago for six weeks plus to three times background and for five days, five times background. This morning it was back up to three times background and when I went back to check an hour later, it was four times background. It was over 105 counts per minute. Ordinarily it's down around 46 to 44. So we're dealing with a surge in radiation that's coming from Fukushima, and I don't know what event happened over there. I don't assume, because I have pretty close news contact, that, that there nothing happened at the Senonofri reactor, which is 12 miles away. So Japan is getting more and more unstable. They're going to get a hell of a lot more uh, radiation release there. And that's why we tell people to take radiation protection like our uh, Keylor Max, Neutrodyne, um, Cell Detox, Glutathione, Neutrotrella, because... We're all getting fried with radiation. We're getting bathed with massive bioaccumulating radioisotopes. And this is going to get a hell of a lot worse before it gets catastrophic. Well, the other thing you want to take care of, of course, is the ultraviolet radiation. We're getting more exactly, of that all yeah. the time. Mm-hmm. Right. The In fact, uh, well, these radioisotopes have been proven, actually, when they are released either by a volcanic uh, release, which happened after the Iceland of, about, what, three or four years ago, uh, and the Fukushima these radioactive uh, radioiodine and so on get in the upper troposphere and they eat away at the ozone layer so you can have massive holes created by the radiation burps that happen from Fukushima. It can actually have major catastrophic effects on ozone holes in the upper atmosphere as well. Well, that would explain why they're getting an ozone hole over uh, New Mexico and Colorado by the... the uh uh, ultraviolet radiation is reaching down as far as it is into the to the ground level on on these right. solar events that are happening. Well, what and I was going to point out, what yeah. I was going to point out was that Pav Pavlov, not Pavlov, Pavlov, P A V L O F volcano, yeah. which is at the inlet that goes into Anchorage, it has erupted and it's sending ash up to twenty thousand feet. Wow. Now, the problem with that is that. Uh, when these volcanoes up there around Anchorage erupt is that they blow down the commercial and the freight airplanes. Right. So, so we're going to have a, uh, you know, they're going to have to plan new routes. They're going to, you know, it's not going to be the most efficient route. And there could be some danger that air flights might be disrupted. That is, if they get enough ash in their engine, the plane can go down. And the only thing that's Well, the there, thing is that the regular Doppler radar doesn't pick up these type of things. Our space-based radar does. But they're not uh, sharing the information with the local uh, uh, airports. So they may not know that they're getting uh, these nanoparticle, uh, you know, little razor blades that can chew up engines and cause them to flare out into high altitude. The problem is that when people go, people don't realize when you go to Anchorage, Alaska, you can do what's called transpolar transport. So a lot of the shipments that go to Europe or back and forth to Europe and to Asia goes through Anchorage, Alaska, because it's the shortest point, if you look at the Earth, to bring produce and, and materials, electronics and so on, and goods that have to be shipped by air directly to Europe or Asia, uh, goes through Anchorage. It's a very major uh, airport, isn't it? Yes, and that's why, the, and you're right about the radar. The regular radar does not pick these up. They, they're no, you can't on see it. Radar. They're working on some yeah. radar that might eventually. They, no, they already have it. It's classified. They have what's called a special type of space-based uh, uh, radar that actually uses to advanced technology. They can see it from space, but they're not wanting to share. It's classified. Uh, well, and part of this is tied in with our, our, our yeah, military grade, and it's it's tied in, by the way, with our space fleets, our Aurora space fleets have been shut up for decades, and our uh, interplanetary of, uh, fleets of vehicles that are actually up there. People don't understand that we have technology far more advanced, including gravitonics, uh, ion jet rockets, all kinds of advanced technologies, and uh, ramjets, et cetera, that were developed in the 1950s that are far more advanced than what we publicly are told. That's why organizations like Virgin Atlantic and uh, and uh, SpaceX, et cetera, are developing all kinds of bringing out some of this technology at the lower level uh, so they can get into near space and then have this giant, quote, space tourism. But the actual fact is that we have technology that's literally been buried for 60 to 70 years that could transform and bring us a safer space, uh, low pollution, no nuclear reactors using nuclear fission to create uh, energy, and plasma distribution lines that set up regular power lines that could be buried that would carry all our power across the continent from geothermal areas and from space energy from a vacuum and plasma fusion energy technology. So uh, the government basically and the above government technologies are sequestered by global satanic elite 
to keep the people in the dark like mushrooms and feed them BS? Well, I think that uh, since last May, the military has said that if the information comes from our satellites, they used to share the data with NASA, but they don't they, share they it don't. anymore. They, they don't share the data. The problem is one of the biggest problems in the government, and I noticed as, as a doctor taking care of government employees working on various projects, one department of the government and one agency doesn't talk to another. It's crazy. Well, then what happens is that if the military <clears throat> keeps all that data, then uh, we don't. It's never public. It's never public domain. And yet it's not just public domain. They don't even talk to each other. We're talking about one <laughs> department of DARPA talking to the CIA, talking to NASA, to to you know the uh, near space uh, Aurora Space Fleet. I mean, people don't understand how nuts this is and how stupid it is. But that's what is going on. Did you hear that the uh, CIA lost a couple of of terrorists? They had put them into the uh, into the uh, you mean the database? No, they put <laughs> they lost them in the database. No, they put them into the witness protection program. Oh no! And, yeah, and they lost, they lost them. them. And they lost them. Oh! <laughs> and when they gave them new identities, they didn't tell the airlines. They didn't tell. Um, Maybe we should CSA. set up a new kind of American Idol for for what we call stupid snoops. You know, we'll call it you know the colossal level stupid snoops. <laughs> Well, there's an idea that might be worth a million dollars. And then you could actually put, you know, market all the stupid things they've done and then have a voting panel of former uh, Delta Force special agents or whatever investigators just, to, you know, give a score up, you know, with a card. If it, was this a 9.9 or was it an 11 out of 10? <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dr. Bill. I hope we got some information out there today. Yeah, um, what we need to do is put our trust in the Most High God. Don't freak out. Pray. Head it over to the Creator God. Uh, without Him, without repentance, America will end. America is the only doorstop against the New World Order. The only one. Uh, not Canada, not Britain. It's America. And this nation, if it repents, will get rid of the abominator, get rid of all this regime of evil. It's not just Him. We will turn back. We will support our state of Israel. We will avoid, like Nineveh, a disaster. Pray for America.